think you have to be okay with saying, with understanding that the philosophies of CrossFit, which I largely agree with, general physical preparedness, develop of energy systems that go from short to long, and the 10 general skills as a model for physical development is a really good model. I like it, I've used it, I have, I actually think I try to embody it in my own training with some of the stuff that I do outside of here. But when you're playing a sport, the sport of CrossFit, even though they say, okay, we're gonna go unknown and unknowable, if you look through all of the chaotic stuff that has come out, that has all been a surprise to us, right? Like yeah. there was years at regionals that came out and the I was like- The dumbbell year? Yeah, where I was like, wait, like, wait, 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 yeah. wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> But if you look back over the course of the decade of the sport, the patterns are still there. Like you have to be, you have to be good at certain things. You have to be good at hanging from a bar and doing toes to bar, bar muscle ups, chest to bar pull ups in super high volume. You have to be good at every variation of burpees. You have to be good at plyometrics for double unders and box jumps. You have to be good at barbell cycling at all loads from 75 weight. pound yeah. snatches all the way up to 265 pound snatches. And be able snatches. to do heavy reps either under pressure or under massive levels of fatigue. So there's patterns of like, all right, from a sport perspective, this is what the base level fundamental stuff that you have to develop is. And in, when that's good, I feel like the next discussion is, all right, now we're dealing with elite athletes and that's the pyramid and the sharpening. And it's very hard to create principles for that, right? Even if you just look at the athletes, like Brent Fikowski, is six foot one, 215, I'm just guessing on that, but somewhere around that. And then Frazier's like five foot six, 200 pounds, which is a completely distribution, different distribution of muscle mass and anthropometrics. If they had the same exact training program, that would be so silly. But there's definitely gonna be themes in there of the fundamentals, and I think that is what we try to do as coaches. Like I look at Travis being 5'10 and 200 pounds, and Noah being 5'7 and 190 or 188. They have different needs, different strengths and weaknesses, and the principles are like all the data that we look at for the qualifiers is like, yeah, that stuff has to be similar. But once you get past that, it's like, all right, now it needs to be done on an individual basis based on where your head yeah. space is, your example, next competition. How much, how much running is Travis doing relative to how much running yeah, Noah's doing, less. right? Yeah, um, that's, although that might change right now. That's yeah. a basic training principle. So you said there's no training principles, but the, the basic training principle that holds from you know, your, your person who just walks into the gym all the way up to the elite level is that individualization has value, that yeah. there's value in assessing the athlete, if it's an athlete, relative to the sport, right? Not just assessing the athlete, oh, you're strong, yeah. et cetera, or et cetera, but assessing limiter, them yeah. relative to the metrics in the sport and then building their training based upon their assessment. Yeah. Like that's the fundamental. Yeah. That can you can play the averages the for someone that's coming up in the sport, right? Like you yeah. have to do that a little bit. You gotta know what's being tested and like hedging your bets a little bit and saying, hey, these are the things that have been tested most often. We wanna prep you for the open. But like you're saying, as you get someone better, then obviously you have to even, you, you circle in those limitations even more if it's fifth place to second place at the games yeah. or qualifying from a sanctional to the games. It's like, this is what's holding you back. And obviously you have to individualize that. Yeah. It's like, a, I don't know, if I look at it as like a level of granularity. So it's like, at First, it's like strength is like, are you strong? Are you powerful? Are you weak? Does it need to get better? Cool. Then like, all right, we prioritize strength for you. Or energy systems is like, all right, I'm a good sprinter, but I'm not going good at going long. So it's like, all right, well, you got to work on your engine and getting long. It's like, then there's sport specific skills. Can you do double unders? Can you do muscle ups? As you keep getting better, the level of granularity and the focus on yeah, those then it things. Goes from, can like, you do double unders to how many can you do unbroken? Yeah. Then the layer above that is how quickly can yeah. you do yeah. 100 Can you unbroken? do 130 per minute? Or can you do them at 130 beats per minute cadence while you're under fatigue and you got blood yeah. pumped in your Well, then forearms. it's a combo of movements, right? Yeah. Can you do and that then, same then thing it, Then it goes to, with can you do triple threes well? Yeah. And can you also do like the heavy double under rope climb from, from Mayhem Classic, right? Yeah. Where those are two completely, someone might be good at double unders in triple threes and be terrible at heavy double unders with, a, with rope climbs, like those yeah, might be yeah. completely different. Well, so this is where I think we can take it all the way back to the start where you guys were talking about like, you know, years in the sport allow you to get better, not just like with, you know, like you're get, creating some like physiological adaptations. Yeah. It's like the psychological stuff helps, right? Yeah. Travis believes that he's better than he was, but then also just the experience of the sport. And I think this is really what makes an elite athlete. The more experience you get 
under the lights or on the field with all the pressure, you find ways to compete at a higher level. Yeah. And that's what made Rich Froning so much better. He failed one year, he came back, and obviously there's probably some other things that helped him, but those are the things I think that really make the best of the best.